cross-examination uh, begins. Mr. Harputian. Please court, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Morning. So, get organized here. I'm calling you Ms. Worley. Do you have a rank? I'm a senior criminalist. But not lieutenant or captain or no. a senior criminalist. And what is a criminalist? criminal list. Uh, I'm in the lab, basically. I'm sorry? I'm, I'm based in the lab, the forensic lab. But you went out to this crime scene? I did, yes. Do you normally go out to crime scenes? I, at that time, yes. I was a special agent. You were what? I was a special agent at the time that I worked this, yes. Okay. And a special agent is, what's so special about <laughs> the special agent? Uh, that's what sled agents are referred to as. Okay. Thank you for some indulgence for one moment. did on this case, and I'm going to try not to repeat a lot of the testimony from our scintillating Friday afternoon together. Um, when did you first go to the scene? Uh, I responded as soon as I got the phone call at 10.33 p.m. Um, I got on the road from my house within 30 minutes and arrived on scene at 12.07 a.m. 12.07 a.m.? Yes. Now, when you got there, the Carlton County Sheriff's Department um, were they supposed to process the scene? No. That what they were supposed to do? Secure it. Secure it so nobody could walk over things and nobody could um, in any way disturb trace evidence, forensic evidence. Isn't that correct? Yes. Now, when you got there, did you determine they had done more than just secure the scene? They had marked some evidence that they had found before we got there. And you also found, for instance, that uh, we've shown you videos that they actually, some of them, or at least one of them, if not two of them, walked into the feed room where Paul was killed, correct? Someone did to place a marker one in the I'm in sorry? The room. Someone had walked in there to walk uh, to place marker one. And matter of fact, when you did your footwear impression examination, you found that there was a bloody footprint caused by one of the officers, isn't that right? After we had started processing the scene, yes. Yes, but I mean, one of the bloody footprints in that feed room was not Paul, not the perpetrator. It was a police officer. Yes. Probably a Carlton County police officer. I don't know that for sure. Who else could it be? It could have been one of us. From one Sled. of yours? I don't Florida. think it was mine, but it could have been from Sled. I don't know. It could have been Sled, could have been Carlton County, yeah. could have been the coroner. Yeah, sure. But, I mean, and in your business, there are rules about who should be walking through crime scenes, right? Yeah. Preferably as few people as possible. If you don't need to be in there, then you shouldn't be in there. <laughs> and when they, um, like, went around and pulled the sheet up, um, they were walking in an area where most likely the perpetrator had walked, correct? Possibly, yes. I mean, that's right outside the feed room. Right. And those shell casings um, that were near, or some of them were near, some of them were further away from Maggie's body, walking in the dark, lichens like increases the probability that some trace evidence has been disturbed or destroyed. Well, that's probably why they went ahead and marked evidence before we got there because they found it and went ahead and marked it so that it wouldn't be disturbed. But couldn't they just stood back and said there's shell casings in there so when you got there you would have been maybe you would have even waited till the next morning when you had some light right? No we would have started like we did as soon as we got on scene. Okay. 
Well, um, you did some measurements. Yes. And those measurements are uh, recorded on a, um, a sketch you did. Yes. Not to scale. Right. And um, make sure. Yeah, that's my stuff. Oh, okay. These are all the exhibits, state and defense? No, Where are the state exhibits? Okay. Okay, so let's look at Do you need more time before proceeding? Well, I'm just trying to. Well, do you need more time? No, no, no sir. I'm, I'm ready. Let me see if she can identify this. Can you tell me what that is, please? This is my final crime scene diagram. Okay. And you did it. I did. You can identify it. Yes. Your Honor, we would offer um, this document into evidence, please. It's her crime scene. What number would that be for the defense? Four. Four. Any objection? Negative. Submit it without objection. Okay, so can uh, you put worldly number one up, please? See that on your screen? Yes, sir. And that is what I just showed you, right? Yes, sir. And what's important to know at the outset is this is not to scale, correct? We never do our diagrams to scale, no. Okay, but um, but it does. You found a projectile that went through the doghouse? That's right. And you found um, a projectile that went through the small animal cage. We didn't locate that, that projectile, but one but, did go But through. you had an entrance and exit wound. Yes, yes, that's right. And um, now these um, d yellow um, items over here near Maggie's body, those represent blackout uh, uh, ejected shells? Yes, those are the evidence markers marking 300 blackout. Okay, and did you take measurements of where those were compared to anything else? For instance, we see a... 23.9 between this post and that post. Did you do anything like that for the projectiles? Uh, I don't believe I did the doghouse because it was inside the bedding of the doghouse. I'm sorry, what now? I didn't, we didn't measure the, the projectile that was in the dog no, bed. No, no, I'm talking about these yellow. Uh, yes. Okay, did you measure where they were? Yes, we did. And there are measurements somewhere? It, uh, I believe on the second page of my, my, the second page of my diagram should be okay. the measurements. Do you have your report with you? I do. Do you have that page two? I want to make sure I'm referring to the right one.
page two of eight, right? Yes. Okay, and um, when it says you've measured them RP1, RP2, what does that mean? Uh, that's reference point. So um, this corner of the feed room was reference point one, this column was reference point two, and this column was reference point three. Okay. Can you find uh, page two for me, please? show this on the Elmo in a little while. Do we have a copy of it? Not yet. What I'd like to do is let me give you yours back. Are these your calculations? They are. And this is what you recorded? Yes. Any objection? No. I'm sorry? No objection. No objection. Okay. Um, Your Honor, I'd like to offer this into evidence. I think it's defense five. So admit it. We'll go back and look at that again in a minute. Um, and so, can I have uh, rolling number one up? Okay, so you, you, you um, located these shell casings, right? Right. You did measurements of how far the small animal cage was from a reference point. Yes. Uh, and how far did you, what was the reference point for the dog house? Um, I'm not sure that I measured the dog house to, uh, to a reference point. You did not measure the dog out. I don't think so. Okay, so let's get a little more. Could you put KNW 1644 up, please? The dog house. Well, looking. and I'll walk, but did, did you make this or was this done under your supervision? Yes. Okay, Your Honor, we'd offer this in evidence. No objection. Number six. Is that made it? Now, I'm not saying your sketch is bad, it's not to scale though, and to give them some idea of the layout. Um, this is the doghouse, yes. correct? Yes, that's right. This is the what you call the small animal cage right here. Right. And that's, uh, that's off the ground. It has legs, yes. Legs, right. 
The doghouse has got like a couple of two by fours under it, so it's not laying directly on the ground, correct? I th yeah, I think that's right. And then if we look over to the right, that would be the door to the feed room where Paul was shot and killed. That's right. Right? Yes. So we're all singing from the same sheet of music here. There's the small animal, I'm calling it quail, but it's not, is it quail? Quail, they apparently kept quail in there. Um, and then there's the doghouse, and then there's the door to the um, feed room. Did you do any measurements, or can you give us any, if, you, if you're standing at the, um, at the uh, quail pen right over here, and you're looking at a 90 degree angle that is out in front of you, is that, am I right on that 90 degrees? Okay. Are you looking at the door to the feed room, or is it to the right or to the left? Well, let me ask you this, did you take any measurements? Uh, not directly from the cage to the door, no. Can you tell me whether, what, is it a 10 degree this way, 10 degree that way? I mean, I mean, I'd have to look at the photographs, if, if any of the photographs show from the door to that animal cage or the animal cage to the door and see if it was at an angle or not, but. But you didn't take any measurements when you were on, what, and when were you on the scene doing these measurements? My initial measurements were the night of the incident, and yeah. then uh, that picture was taken July 16th when we went back to take additional measurements. And it was after July 16th you generated uh, the sketch we saw a moment ago. Um, no, I think I did this before we went back to the scene on the 16th. So nothing changed in your sketch? No. And to your knowledge, you never took any sort of directional, um, directional uh, examination of the reference points, for instance, the dog pen um, and the door to the, to the, um, to the feed room or from the uh, quail cage to the uh, door of the feed room, correct? That's right. Okay, now, um, do you know what, hold on one second, do we have Pharaoh? Do we have Pharaoh? No? Yes. Yes, okay. What's Pharaoh? Tell the jury what Pharaoh is. Uh, Pharaoh is a 3D laser scanner that we use to document the scenes. Uh, okay, it takes did, a, you, did you use a Faro scanner on this scene? On the July 16th we did. We couldn't the night of the incident because it was raining. So tell us how one scans for a Faro, and, and by the way, is the end result of that Faro uh, process a three-dimensional view of the scene? Yes, that's right. And so that you can manipulate it, turn it, um, examine it in any direction you want, correct? Yes. And you had that done in this case? Yes. I did not hear the Attorney General ask you about it in your direct. Was it, did, was it brought here to the courtroom? I, I believe it's here, yes. It's here. Okay. Well, um, I have a copy of what you furnished to us. Any objection to this coming into evidence? <coughs> No objection. All right, could you play that for me? Wait, wait, wait one second. Does Faro stand for something, or is it a brand name like Coca-Cola or Xerox? Or it's a brand name. I, I think it does stand for something. I'm not sure what. We just always call but it Faro. Brand. When somebody says Faro, it's not. There's a specific commercial product called Faro that law enforcement uses, and other folks use too, right? Yes. Okay, how about play that for me, and I may stop it from time to time. Your Honor, I believe a juror raised his hand. Your Honor. Yes. Yeah, I thought we... Apologize. Oh, um, okay, start it, and then stop it. Go ahead. Now, stop it briefly. Is this a drone video? No, it's uh, created by the Faro software. Created by Faro software. Okay, right. go ahead. Stop it again. That would be right down here. That would be the dog uh, cage. 
camp a dog uh, house, right? Right. Okay, keep going. Okay, stop right there. Now, we're seeing the inside of, what is this room called? I refer to it as a workshop. Work, okay. And the bullet that went into the quail cage went through the quail cage and came out this wall, right? That's right. Okay, go ahead. Again, stop it one second. Make sure I look this straight on. And the quality of this isn't very good. Why is that? I'm not really sure. But I mean, isn't there a final product you get from this? Uh, I'm not sure if there's something more final than that. I don't do the rendering of the software, so I'm not sure if there's okay. something more than that. Keep, keep going. Okay, stop. That's the quail cage right over here, correct? That's right. Right here. Okay, go ahead. That would be the doghouse. Yes. Okay, let's keep going. Stop it, please. Now, the bullet hole into the, the doghouse is on the side facing this greenery, or is it on this side over here? It, it's on the other side. On the other side. So there's a bullet hole that comes in here on this side. Right, the kennel side, yes. What now? The side that the kennels are on. No, the kennel's back this way, right? Yeah, but it's on that. If you're looking at the front of the doghouse. Okay, right, 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 right. So it's it's coming in here. Yes. And where's it exiting? It goes into the doghouse in the, there was a dog bed uh, in the doghouse. It goes in there. Okay. Keep going. Oh. Stop right there. Go back just a little bit. Okay, go ahead. So as we watch it come around, you would agree with me that the doghouse is not perpendicular to, stop it, to the door to the uh, feed room, correct? Right. Okay, keep going. And that would be, stop it, that would be the feed room right here, correct? Yes, that's right. And these are the dog kennels up here. Right. Okay, keep going. And so you can see, that's like a chicken coop right there? I believe so. Okay, keep going. That's looking at a, at a um, structure that's back probably 150, 200 feet away from the, the kennels, right? Yes. It's got farm equipment in it? Yes. Okay. That's it. So we have, and you could take this and convert it into, well, let me ask you this. Do you know how they do this? On scene, we take scans with the scanner. Uh, anything the laser touch touches, it records. Um, beyond that, I'm... Well, there's a laser touch, and then isn't there a camera that goes 360 degrees this way and 360 degrees this way, 
and the laser and the camera sync up, um, and you do a number of them. Yes. Maybe a hundred or so, and Not then it knits it together. That's right. To get this. Yes. But you agree with me that you could do a much more focused look. Um, this obviously has not been converted totally to 3D, has it? I'm not sure. Okay. Who ordered this? Who said we need this? Uh, I'm not really sure. I went. I was told to go to the scene and additional documentation, and that's what we did. So I'm not sure. So, I mean, if I told you your chain of custody on this indicates it was uh, y'all received it sometime in July or August of last year, and it's been in the custody of SWED <coughs> since early January, probably three weeks ago. Is that correct? I'm not sure when it was made, but but it didn't. It wasn't turned over or, or pulled out of the, the uh, evidence locker until three weeks ago, correct? I'm really not sure. Okay. Now, um, let me ask you to look at. that report of, of the sketches, right? Mm -hmm. Well, let me, let me do this first. these photos and see if you can identify them. Yes. Okay. What are they? Those are photographs uh, that we took when we returned on July 16th. And these are specifically photographs of the doghouse? Yes. And I'll get to these in just a minute. This would be seven, eight. This would be eight, eight nine, and ten. Let me make sure I don't put duplicates in. <coughs> Let me also show you this photograph and see if you can identify it. Yes. What is that? Uh, it's a picture when we were <coughs> trying to determine the angle of that defect in the okay. doghouse. The defect would be the bullet hole? Yes, sir. Uh, offer this into evidence as number 11 without objection. 11? Right? jury room for a break. Please do not discuss the case. Do y'all want to introduce any exhibits without objections? I think all one of the, no, no objections. No objections, Your Honor. What are the exhibit numbers? So Your Honor, give us one minute, she's still marking. Yeah. Thank you. 
it? No, 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 it's two, two separate. is present. Thank you. Seven numbers. Nine, ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight. We're all admitted without objection. So um, you took measurements, um, for instance, let me show you the, the, the picture I want to show you to begin with, which is um, of the quail um, cage. First of all, I'll show you exhibit number 20, which is Worley, page 7, if you could put that up on the screen. You recognize that? I do. And what is that? It's one of the diagrams that I created. And what's it a diagram of? That quail cage. Okay. Now, you <coughs> did a, okay, that sketch, and that sketch shows, so it says, defect interior side of cage, in defect interior side wall of cage, and defect interior back wall of cage, right? Right. So you have an entrance, and an exit hole, correct? That's right. Now, what did you try? What did you do to try to determine the trajectory on that? Where did it come from? We placed a flight path rod um, through defect J uh, all the way through to where it went through the back of, back wall of the cage. Okay. And let me see. I know I have a picture of that. Here somewhere.
Was that a picture of that rod? It's one of the many pictures, yes. No, but I mean, does it's that picture accurately depict the rod you put through, but from the in exterior to the interior? Yes. Okay. How about put that up, please? It would be uh, 2019. So you're telling the jury that this is a rod that you ran from that, the, from the entrance hole to the exit hole, and what are you doing right here? That's where we're determining the angle. Uh, Upward or downward angle. That's right. Okay. Now let's talk about how you determine the angle of front to back. I don't know what you call that scientifically. I mean, did you determine the angle of that rod? as to the exterior wall of that? Yes. Okay. And um, the, based on the exhibit we saw a moment ago, the entrance wound would have been on the, how about go back to Worley page seven. The entrance would have been on this side, correct? Yes. Now, the, uh, the feed room, you would agree with me, is not on that side of the uh, quail cage, correct? That's right. Matter of fact, th this side faces the feed room, correct? I believe so, yes. Now, did you ter determine, and I can walk through all the technical things you did, but did you only determine the angle, you can check your notes, the angle of the entrance hole over here to that side. That is, at what is the, is that horizontal? Am I talking horizontal? Yes. Okay, the horizontal um, entrance and exit wound, if you put that rod through it, what did it tell you about the angle as opposed to that flat area? Uh, we determined it was approximately 41 degrees. 41 degrees. And if I'm standing at that edge, is it 41 degrees to my right or my left? I believe to the right. I'm not sure, though. Can you look and see? I don't have that in my notes. OK, let me show you a picture. It's worth a thousand words. help refresh your memory? Yes. And so, um, let me, could you put uh, KNWL2019 up, please? put that rod through, and then you put a protractor up against it, and then the protractor told you it was 41 degrees from flat, from flat, or I don't know. From, from the, where the uh, bullet went in the wall, from that flat edge to where the angle is was 41 degrees. Okay, and let me show you KNWL2007. <coughs> Ask you a question as soon as it comes up. You know, strike that. I don't need it. I don't. Need, well, that's it. But that depicts that rod you put from the exterior through the interior, right? That's right. And so, as that rod sticks out, it would be the path of the bullet. Approximately, yes. Approximately. Okay. And it's 41 degrees from neutral. Yes. Or I mean, it'd be, if this were the wall of the, um, the, the wall the bullet went into, it would be, 41 degrees would be over here. Yes. Right. So that side, right. 
Okay, and so, and I see from that picture we showed a moment ago, you used a protractor, just like this one, or maybe similar to this one, to determine that angle, right? That's right. And basically you just um, put, you take the rod and then you put this up to it and then figure out what the angle is, right? You line up the middle of the protractor on, on where the defect is, yes. Where the defect, where the bullet hole is. Right. Okay. Now, did you do the same thing for the dog pen? A dog house. Yes, we did. And let me walk you through a couple of those pictures. Let me see if I have. Okay. Let's go to page six of eight of her report. Is that something you prepared? It is. Okay. So if we look at this, could you zoom in just a little bit for me, please? And here we go. So defect one is the entrance hole. It's defect I, yes. I'm sorry? Defect I. Okay. And defect H is what? It we weren't sure if it was a, a defect. It didn't it didn't go through the wall, but we marked it. Did you have anything that went all the way through? Just I. Just I. Um, but you also stuck a rod in that, correct? Yes, we did. And what was the, and the, and the dog, uh, this side of the um, dog house would be the side facing the kennels? Yes. Okay. And what was the angle, entrance angle on that? You put a rod through and measured, just like you did before, um, with a protractor. And what was the, um, the angle on that? The horizontal angle was approximately 84 degrees. So 84 degrees. Now the side the bullet went in was facing the dog pens. Yes. And as we see from the photos, approximately, I mean, again, I'm just some guesswork, but not square with the dog pens, a little bit further to, if you're standing uh, in the feed room, if you're looking at the dog, house, um, it would be a little bit to your left, correct? That's right. And then this trajectory into the doghouse is 84 degrees, which means it's coming, if that's the, the, uh, the uh, feed room, it's coming from even further over here, correct? Yes. Okay. So let me have you do this for me. You, if, I, if I had a sketch, your sketch, of the doghouse and the quail cage, you could take that protractor right there and basically show the line out, correct? From the quail cage to the doghouse? No, from the quail cage, the trajectory. If I put down <coughs> that protractor on the side where the bullet went in, it's pretty easy to identify in your sketch. Right. And went to, what was the first one? How many degrees? I'm sorry, I can't remember it either. It was uh, 41 degrees. 41 degrees. 41 degrees um, on your sketch. Uh, you could follow the trajectory of that bullet out, correct? Yes. You do the same thing on the doghouse. Dog right. Okay. Wait one second. Yes. Okay. Um, how about do me a favor and keep track of what the different angles are? Because I'll never remember when you get down here. So, 
If you'd step down, please. get this oriented correctly. If you take it, and let's go from the quail um, oh, here it is, small animal cage, and the projectile came in on this side over here, correct? Okay, so if you'll come over here for me, please, and put the projector in a, a projector, put the protractor, protractor. Um, against the, there you go. And how many degrees did that go? 41 degrees. Okay, could you put that on 41 degrees? About 41. Okay, and could you take that line out for me, please? Is there a way for you to draw that? This is a pretty fine point, Sharpie. Hold this down if you'll draw that line for me, please. Okay. And let's go to the dog house. What was the degrees on that? 84. Okay, 84 degrees. Okay. And how about draw a line for that for me, please? from the side of the talk house. That's okay. And I can get it perfect. Okay. Now, I'll take that easel now. Okay. Okay. Um, if you just step over there for a second. Here, correct? That's right. Would you circle that with a red circle for me, please? Okay. And the trajectory on both these shots, so let's take the small animal cage. Did that come from anywhere near, near the feet? Doesn't appear to have, no. It would have been up if you follow that out. Are you familiar with where that? Um, Great vine was. If you're looking at the feed room, all the way to the right. Well, I think a little bit further up than that. But even maybe beyond that, one of the shots fired by that AR blackout was fired from somewhere way up here. Correct. I mean, that's the trajectory. Doesn't mean I can't tell you the distance it was from from the animal cage to wherever. I can't tell you where the shooter was within that line. But that line is way away from the, from the, from the right? right? And this one, while it's closer, it's still many feet away from the, um, the feed door. Yes. So as you saw this area right here that night, you assumed, I think not assumed, but everyone's sort of concluded that it was a really close shot into the feed room that killed Paul, correct? Two shots. I believe so, yeah. Okay. Now the AR, 
um, at least this line would indicate the AR was some distance away from the feed room when those two shots were fired, correct? Okay, now you recovered these projectiles. Did, were they tested for blood or tissue so that you could determine whether they passed through Maggie or just for misses? I submitted it to the lab. Don't you don't know whether they tested them or not. If I, I told you they didn't test them, would that surprise you? No. Okay. Now, does this lead you to believe, and you're someone that processes crime scenes, I mean, if this had been sketched out the night of the, of the um, I mean, you didn't take these measurements until a month later. Yeah, I took these measurements on scene the night of. Oh, so you had these measurements. Right. You, but did you know the degrees? No, that I didn't know. Until July 12th. But on July 12th, did anyone go back out and walk <coughs> this line to see if maybe there's shell casings way up here? No one looked up there, correct? Not what I'm aware Okay, and no one did a topographical study to indicate if you follow these lines back, whether the wherever a shooter could have been were higher or lower uh, than um, the doghouse or the the um, small animal cage, right? But doesn't this indicate to you there were two shooters? There was a shooter up here and a shooter down here. Is there a possible? Well, let me say this: Is it a possibility that there are two shooters based on the data you collected? Just, I, it just indicated it was, there was movement to me. Movement from here all the way up to here? I don't know that it went all the way up there. But is it, I'm not telling you, I mean, one, one explanation would be movement, correct? Yes. One explanation would be, would be two shooters. I'm sorry? Yes? I wasn't there. No, 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 no. But one explanation of this data would be two shooters. <coughs> one explanation, not the, but one. Not the only one. Yeah, not the only one, but it is a reasonable explanation, just like one shooter running up that way, correct? Sure. So a re one of the reasonable explanations is there are two people there, there are two guns there, one's a shotgun, one's an AR, and we now see that that AR is being shot from way up here, correct? I can't see that, though. It's somewhere along that line. And that line goes a dozen, two dozen, three dozen yards from the feed room if you follow it straight up. I don't know where they were within that line. Could someone have been a lookout there? They went there to kill Paul, and, and uh, that's the lookout. Maggie surprised them. They thought she was gone. I no idea. Reasonable though, right? Right? I didn't like you. I wasn't there. I know you weren't there, but none of us were there. We're trying to figure out what happened that night. And clearly, one reasonable explanation is two shooters. One explanation. Right, and a number of them. I'd like to offer this to Evans. Yeah, it's not to scale. She prepared it. Talk to the court. I'm sorry. Your Honor, I'm offering this to Evans. Says the state. No objection, Your Honor. Go ahead and take your stand.
shot. You testified it was 80 something degrees, right? 84 degrees. It's not 90 something degrees? I had 84. Okay, let me show you defense exhibits 19 and 22. Are these the actual protractor, protractor um, measurements you did that? Of the animal cage. Okay, both of them are of the animal cage? Yes. Okay. And did you do the same measurements? on the doghouse? Yes. What does that indicate? You mean what is this? No, what is the angle based on that? Can't really. Eighty something. <laughs> okay. You have in your notes, let me see what you have in your notes you recorded. It. And that's where's your where's your um, full report? This is Just all the notes. Yeah, I'm looking for the sketch though. Okay. Hey, where's the doghouse? What does the horizontal 96 degrees mean? Uh, not sure why that says 96. I'm sorry? I'm not sure why it says 96 if I had 84. In your crime scene notes? That's right. But you wrote down, uh, your official report said 96 degrees. My notes said 84 degrees. Well, did you just... The notes were taken at the scene? Yes. Okay. Beg the court's indulgence. Based on your calculations, both of those shots came well to the right, if you're facing the feed room, well to the right of where the feed room is, correct? Thereabouts. I'm sorry? Thereabouts, yes. Thereabouts? Yeah. Is that what you said? Yes, sir. So I'm, I'm trying to look for some concise, you're a criminalist. You would agree with me that they did not come from the feed room or right. the vicinity of the feed room, and they're literally yards away from the feed room, correct? Yes. Okay, I'm not going to beat that horse. So let's talk a little bit about footprints, okay? Okay. So I noticed in your report, correct me if I'm wrong, that you were unable to identify, either exclude or include, a number of different footprints in and around the feed room, bloody footprints, um, and other footprints um, because of the quality of the photography. Is that correct? I was able to attribute them to Paul's shoes. I'm sorry? I was able to attribute them to Paul's shoes, though. Well, we'll talk about Paul's shoes in just a minute. Mm -hmm. But when you, uh, what's the process to take a photograph 
of footwear or imprint um, that's recognized by a number of different agencies, including the FBI. What's that process? Place a scale, and preferably an L scale, uh, around the impression and document it with the camera parallel to the surface so you get a straight on shot. Um, put it in the camera in raw setting so you capture all the data with that photograph. So let me ask you, so the process is, first of all, you take a general photo photograph of the impression, right? It's yes. A, it doesn't matter what angle, doesn't matter what the lighting is at that point, correct? If you're just documenting you're just that it's there. But when you go to take a photograph of a footprint for forensic analysis later on to compare it to a known shoe, um, you're supposed to do a couple things. Um, one, you're supposed to have good lighting if you can get it, right? Preferably. Two, you're supposed to put a scale down next to it so that later on you can, I mean, because you need to understand how big or how small um, the foot is and the distance between the treads. So the scale is a little, um, like a little ruler, just a piece of a ruler that you put down next to it to get some idea whether what an inch looks like, what two inches look like. And that's really important, is it not? It is to make sure it's to scale. Okay. And then you're supposed to do a photograph straight down on it with, again, with good lighting um, so that you can have, a, you understand what you're seeing is a straight on impression, correct? That's right. Now, was that done on any, any of the impressions that y'all analyzed? No, we didn't recognize on scene. I'm sorry? We didn't recognize on scene that there was footwear. You didn't recognize on scene there was what? Footwear impressions in the, in the room. Well, that, that brings up another topic. Um, there was a, what appeared to, may have been, a footwear impression on Maggie's calf, correct? I couldn't say that that was a footwear impression, just an impression. Well, there was something on her leg that could have been a footwear impression, correct? Possibly. Possibly. And again, they didn't put a scale, they didn't do any of this procedure, correct? That's right. And it was in dirt. Yes. So, or mud, one. And so, once her body was removed from the scene, that examination could never be done, correct? That's right. As a matter of fact, none of the impressions could be examined after um, the next day at best, correct? Not physically. Right, I mean, we couldn't go back out and take new photographs. Right. So the procedures followed were not the procedures recommended by every agency and your agency, correct? If, if I had realized that was footwear on scene, I would have documented it properly, yes. Okay. But since it wasn't documented properly, we can't include or exclude, except for Paul's, correct? That's right. Now, are you a uh, certified footwear examiner? I'm, yes. By who? Well, within SLED, yes. I'm sorry? Within SLED. Within SLED, but you not peer reviewed or? Oh, yes, I am peer reviewed. By somebody at SLED? Every, yes. Okay. And your analysis is that one set of those um, footwear impressions is Paul facing the back of the uh, feed room, right? Right. And yet, we know, and they're bloody, so he's already been shot. Right. And we know he, the initial shot came buckshot, very small pattern, in his chest, and came out underneath his left arm. Matter of fact, there was wadding under his left arm, and buckshot went through the back window and embedded in the windowsill. You documented that, right? Right. And then I think some of it embedded in a tree back behind that window, correct? I think, yes. And he's facing backwards, bloody footprints. Has anyone discussed with you how he got faced away from where he was shot? No. Were the footprints smudged as if he was turning? And there was blood uh, dripping. He was stepping in the blood and leaving his own footwear impressions in the blood. I don't, I don't know that it was smeared necessarily. Well, we also know that a second shot um, 
literally his head exploded, his brain flew out. May have, we know there's hair and blood all over that door up high. There's actually hair and blood and pieces of his skull in the ceiling and around him, um, assuming the first shot would not have been immediately fatal because it didn't hit any, any critical organs. He would have been alive for some period of time after that shotgun blast to the, to the chest. Um, but the second shot, as you've seen in the pictures, and you were there that night, wasn't his brain laying at his feet? It was beside his left leg, yes. I'm sorry? It was beside his left leg, yes. Yeah. And he's, his feet are just, one of them is just inside the feed room and the other's not. Yes. And he's face down. Right. So you can't explain how he got shot in the front when he's at some point soon thereafter is facing backwards. I can't say which way he was facing when he was actually shot. The, the second shot, he was right there at the door. I, know, I can tell you that. So he got from facing the back door after he was shot, I mean the back window, to facing forward for the second shot. Is that right? Right. Has anyone from SLED briefed you on after you identified those footprints? No. They didn't ask for any explanation? Not for me, no. Okay, and you would agree that because of the way the scene was processed, that most of the footprints you were unable to do any comparison to because of the way the pictures were? No, right. I was able to do a comparison with, and they were mostly Paul's shoes. Other than those two? There was one right inside the door. There was one further to the left where the door was. Um, then there were at least two by marker one. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, at least one of those bloody footprints initially identified as Paul's turned out to be a police officer's, isn't that correct? Not, it wasn't initially identified as Paul's, no. But there was a bloody footprint near his that turned out to be law enforcement, correct? Yes. In the fever. Right. In blood. Is that preservation of the scene that your that your standards require? Not not exactly, no. Not exactly? Should the police be walking through the scene? No. Do we know what other evidence they may have destroyed? I have no idea. That's right, we don't. Now, um, seen this photograph before? Can you identify it? It's not one that we took. But it, does it appear to be in the area you've been describing? Close, yes. In, it's in the feed room. So you don't know whose feet those are? No. Okay. Did you check other foot impressions in the feed room and exclude Paul? <coughs> no. There were other bloody footprints or impressions in the feed room. Did you identify them as Paul's? I thought I accounted for all the ones that we knew of. Okay. Now, Exhibit number two, and we need to cover the screens.
So we've talked about this previously just a moment ago. Um, I'm going to put it up here so we can blow it up. Okay. Do you recognize this photo? Yes. Is that the way you saw Maggie that night? It is. Now, how about zoom in on her calf right, right there? Yep. Now, somebody, even that night we see in notes, thinks that may be, could be a, a footwear impression or it could be something else, correct? I couldn't determine what kind of impression it was. No. Okay. But you would agree with me there is something on the back of her leg that has some sort of pattern in it? It is, yes. Okay. Not naturally occurring pattern. Right. And this is the only photograph you received that night, or you received ever, of Maggie's calf, correct? That's not the photo I used at all. I'm sorry? That's not the photograph I used at all for my footwear examination. What photograph did you use? Four twenty. Four twenty. You got it. Okay, put that one up, and then we'll see if she can identify. Him. Is that four twenty? Yes. Okay. Um, we'd like to offer photograph four twenty into evidence, Your Honor. Um, no objection. We just asked to see the photo before it's offered. It's admitted. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I don't have it. We'll get it. Do we have a, Holly, we've got a hard copy of that? Thank you. We'll get it to you in just a minute. Um, but, so, can you come down here for just a second, please? Yes. How about point to the jury where that impression is on her leg. This whole area right here. And it has, if you blow it up, you can see some regular lines as opposed to irregular, right? Yes. yes. Which would indicate um, some not natural, but when I say unnatural, man-made <coughs> something caused that, correct? There's a distinct pattern to it. Okay. Now, <coughs> were you able to, why were you not able to get significant definition to compare it to a footwear? I felt like I had enough definition, I just couldn't attribute it to any type of footwear. Any type of footwear? As far as any type of shoe, um, I wasn't able to attribute it to a specific type of shoe. Okay, now, and you would agree with me, there's no scale. Right. There's no multiple pictures of this from different angles for the purpose of giving you the more definition so you can make a comparison, correct? There's not. Um, so this was not done according to procedure. I mean, I didn't know about this on scene. Yeah, but as, as your photographers take pictures, um, aren't they, I mean, wouldn't it be good just to put down a scale no matter what? If I, if I had seen that, we would have. But I mean, somebody had. a lot of these photographs are taken without you present, correct? No, I was there. You were there for that photograph? Yes. And did you notice the mud on her foot away? No. But as you look at it now, you agree that a better photograph taken under the procedures of SLED and the FBI and everybody else could have given uh, you a, a better ability to match it to a piece of footwear, correct? I don't, I don't know that a better photograph would have given me better results. I, I think I saw enough of it to know I wasn't going to be able to attribute it to a type of footwear. Without a straight on shot, without a scale, without all the things recommended. I couldn't, I couldn't even say it was a footwear impression. I just called it a based, impression. Based on, that, based on that photograph? Yes. Which is not a photograph done to compare footwear? It, not ideal, no. Not ideal. It's not, there's no, the standards say that is not within the standards, correct? Objection, argumentative. Can you answer the question? Go ahead. Is, you what the question is? Uh, the question is, I'm sorry, Your Honor. Did you understand the question? Yes. What's the answer? It would be better to take the photograph properly with the scale. 
but you would concede this was not taken pursuant. I mean, what, you're, what you're saying is no one appreciated the fact that it was a footwear or could be a footwear impression that night, so no one treated it like a piece of footwear. Right. But we know that same night they didn't treat any suspected footwear according to procedures, correct? No scale, no multiple pictures, no 90 degree, right? Right. Okay, thank you. Go ahead and take the stand. Did um, you participate in processing um, Alex's T-shirt, shorts, and shoes? The T-shirt and shorts, yes. Okay. And what did you do with that? As far as the LCV? Yeah. Um, we documented the entire process from start to finish, with the, starting with the packaging that the shirt was in. Um, took the shirt out of the package, photographed it front and back, inside and out, to show how it was before we did anything to it. Uh, then we hung it up and applied the LCV, which is a liquid spray. Um, any stains that we saw after using the spray, uh, we documented those with photographs without scale, and then we just photoed with the, with the scale. Uh, then we laid the shirt flat and photographed each of those stains on the shirt. It was stains A through H on the front and stains I and J on the back. Uh, we labeled those A through H, I and J uh, with scale and photographed each one of them um, before we did anything else. Let me show you a couple photographs. Any objections? Okay. Can you identify these, please? Doug, 19A, please. Yes. Yes. Is that the shirt as you saw it that night? Not that night, no. When, when did you see it? When we processed it at when the lab. Okay. So you would agree with me that this shirt has doesn't look like it just came back from the laundry. It's got smudges down here and generally stains here and there, correct? It's not completely clean. Yeah, okay. Well, that's it. It's not completely clean, correct? Right. And then I'd offer that into evidence, Your Honor. Tell me what this is, please. Uh, after we had sprayed the shirt with LCV, we laid it in a grid to account for uh, where on the shirt each stain was. And there seems to be something on the bottom that looks like a handprint, does it not? I didn't see a handprint. That was uh, on the body cam footage where he was wiping his face with the shirt right there. Offer this in evidence. Can I have uh, that 19, I'm sorry, let me see what it is. What, what does it say at the bottom? Uh, KNM3282. Okay, and we agree that you did this with LCV, right? That's a what they call a presumptive test. It could be human blood. It could also be animal blood. It also could be detergent. Objection, Your Honor. Could we ask one question at a time? I was trying to summary, um, but I'll do it. Okay. Could it be something other than it, 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 something other than human blood? It doesn't. It doesn't determine whether it's human or not. Right. So it could be animal blood. It's possible. Could be detergent. Detergent oftentimes. Uh, not I, bleach, maybe. 
bleach, okay. Um, what about uh, organic matter like plants? The only two I know of really is bleach and rust. That rust? Right. Okay. But there are other things that will, will and that's why you do a confirmatory test. Right. And that's done with hematrace. I'm not sure how. I don't do that part. So. Well, do you know what the results were when they treated it with hematrace? Uh, I'm not sure, no. You never saw the report? No. No human blood found? Okay, now, did you test the shorts? We did, we did the same procedure with the shorts. And, and yes. there, there some presumptive, I mean, some indication that it was human blood or something else, correct? Yes. Um, do you know whether they ran a confirmatory test on that? I'm not, I assume they did. I'm not did sure. you, did, well, but you don't know. Right. Do you know whether, did you use LCV on the shorts or did you use something else? We used LCV. Okay. Did you do the shoes? No. Take the course and told just one moment, please. I beg the court's indulgence for trying to make sure one. Screen. I'll give you a, a uh, copy of it if she can identify it, okay? And I think she can. Go ahead and put it up. Go ahead and put it up. It's number 217. Can you see it? Yes. Not very bright. Is that a picture that you took? Yes. Okay. Um, Your Honor, we'd offer this picture into evidence. Okay, could you step down here, please? <coughs> so the angle, this is the doghouse. What's the angle on this? Approximately 80, 84, 83. Yes, okay. Just wanted to make sure we all were on singing from the same shooting music, even though you wrote down 96 in your report, correct? In, in my diagram of that, yes. Right. The official report. It's the 80, official. My official notes say 84 degrees. But I'm, I'm talking about what you, what we got. But, I mean, we got our, your notes also, but in your printed document, you said 96. On the diagram, yes. Yes. But it's only 84. Right. Okay. Thank you.
So, and again, maybe I need to check you on this, but the angle from the doghouse you seem to indicate is going still to the right of the, um, the uh, dog kennels. But and let me check it out just one second. Thank you. No further questions. All right. All right, Agent Corley. Let's see. What? Right. Um, we saw this big diagram and then some other. Um, diagrams that you prepared. Um, what was the purpose of you preparing um, all these diagrams? So for that one where the evidence was in relation to each other, where the victims were in relation to the evidence, uh, where the kennels were and the, the workshop overhang, uh, measurements, um, all the other diagrams, the doghouse, uh, animal cage, uh, were to show more measurements of where the bullet defects were. Would those be done for um, reconstructive purposes? That's right. And was that really done here on this case? Not that I'm aware of, no. Okay. And in this diagram, what? Defense Exhibit 29, we see um, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And what were those? Um, what did those indicate? Those were 300 blackout cartridge cases. And um, this is not to scale, is that right? No, not at all. So what does that mean if something's not to scale? I, it's not, um, like an inch on there is not an in inch in real life. It's, uh, it's just an approximation of where everything was in relation <coughs> to each other. So it may not correspond to the actual dimensions of things on the scene. Right. Now, are you aware that there was um, stippling on the victim, Maggie Murdoch? Yes. And what does it mean if there's stippling on a victim? It's a close gunshot. Uh, it was, she was shot close range. And the defense asked you about some different possibilities here. Um, it's possible that people can move around? Yes. And it's also possible that one person could have had two guns. That's right. All right. Then we talked a lot about footprints. Here. In 
the feed room, was there a bunch of bloody footprints? There were. Kind of gotten uh, disarray over here. If I could have a moment. Exhibit 35. Are those um, the bloody footprints in the feed room? Two of them, yes. And those were determined to be the footprints of Paul Murdoch? Right. And now, just to be clear, I mean, in this picture, we aren't seeing like five sets of other bloody footprints? No. So um, you talked about some other footprints in the feed room. Could you kind of elaborate on that? Uh, closer to the door, there was one, um, and also closer to the door, the actual physical door, there was one, a partial impression. Okay. And did you determine who those footprints belong to? Those were consistent with Paul's shoes. And is it possible that after SLED took some crime scene photos and moved Paul's body that someone could have come in along later and stepped in? Objections overruled. Is it possible that if there were more prints in there that those could have been after SLED's pictures were taken? I speculation. Objections overruled. I suppose so, yes. We also talked about footprints in states 194 and 195. Why couldn't you do anything with those footprints? I was not made aware of those four impressions until June 15th when I saw one of those photographs. So you didn't take any of these pictures while you were out there at the scene? No, it was on the other side of the workshop. And we have no way to know when these footprints occurred. Right. Um, now, the defense showed us a picture of that um, dirt on the back of Maggie Murdahl's leg. Um, do we even know if that's a shoe print? No. Look at States Exhibit 70 and 71. Could you tell us what those are pictures of? These are pictures of the front of the ATV that was parked uh, near Maggie's body. Your Honor, the state removed 70 and 71 into evidence. Okay. Made it without objection. So if we look here at um, Defense Exhibit 9, can you point out where the ATV was there the night of the murders? Uh, that photo was taken on July 16th. It's there. But where were the photos or the ATVs on the night of the ATV on the night of the murders? Uh, under, under that overhang behind the doghouse. This time I'm going to publish, takes exhibit 70.
Where was Maggie Murdoch's body in relation to this ATV? Uh, would be toward the, the right of the ATV. So it was kind of in front of the ATV? Yeah. yeah. And did you observe any kind of biological matter on that ATV? Yes. In States Exhibit 71, could you kind of point out or describe for the jury um, where you can see spots of biological matter? Do you want me to step down? Your Honor, may she step down? It appears to be biological matter. Did she test? Was it tested? I have to hear the question before I can hear an objection. Go ahead. Agent Forley, if you could please point out for the jury where it would appear to be biological matter or tissue on that ATV. I object to the question. I object to the response because it was never tested. It appears, and it could be deer blood, it could be a number of different things. This calls for speculation. Objection is overruled. So these areas are here, uh, a little there, there. Uh, I believe there was a little bit on the, this tire also. Thank you, Agent Corley. For the cross examination. Just, just, oh, you would concede. I mean, if you saw that, would you not? I mean, it looked like blood. Yes. Did you test it for blood? No. Gather, swab something so you could take it back to the lab and see if it was Maggie's blood, blood, Paul's blood, deer blood. I mean, they hunt in those ATVs, right? I have no idea what they do in those. You don't know if they hunt using ATVs? Really? Is that one of the things you're aware that's done with those? I am now, yes. Okay. But the night you saw that blood, you didn't take a swab of it, or whatever you thought was blood, didn't swab it? No, I didn't. And matter of fact, there's a pool of water around Paul. Did anyone ask you to take a sample of that? No. Determine whether or not there was human blood in it? No. Okay. Um, now, I'm, I'm looking at your shoe uh, report. You specifically say on a number of these that the photograph is inadequate to do a comparison, right? I was able to, my result was, uh, it was adequate enough to determine outsole design. I, I couldn't. I'm sorry, adequate to do what? To determine the outsole design of the impression. Uh, I, I wouldn't have been able to identify it. Okay, on Paul's, the ones you've already said, he was facing backwards. Did you say, um, that you had partials, and at one point you didn't know which way the foot was facing. Did you say that? I'm not sure. Did you come to any conclusions about any of, any of the other, I mean, did you match his footwear to any of the other bloody impressions in that feed room? Yes. Which ones? The one by the door, like right, right in front of the doorway. What's the number of that? One oh five point one. I'm sorry. Item one oh five point one. Facing the doorway. It says that out the outsole design is consistent with item one oh three Paul Shoe. So you also say that the, the way you got scale was, and some of these were evidence markers, and then you figured out how big the evidence marker was, and that's what you used to get to scale. The, the marker and the shot shells at markers 9 and 10 were measured. Yes. And that's not the best way to do it, is it? No. <laughs> and um, in terms of 
the sketch we had, do, you do, a pretty crude sketch, but well, have you ever been asked by SWED or the Attorney General's office to do this trajectory analysis that I asked you to do today? No, but I, I don't necessarily do crime scene reconstruction. Who does? I'm not sure. We don't necessarily do that ourselves. We process crime scenes and document it, but we don't do reconstructions. But no one has consulted with you about a reconstruction. No one's come from SWED and said, let's go over these angles or, you know, how did you c conduct this or nobody's asked you. No. Have you ever had a conversation with anybody from the Attorney General's office about this? No, I don't think so. Did they ever talk to you about uh, the video we showed a little while ago, of the process you all used to try to make a 3D? Um, Not with me. With, with others who, who rendered the FARO software, the video. They talked to people that did the FARO? Yeah, I believe so. What? I believe so, yes. Do you know who that was and who they talked to? No. Do you know when that was? Not really, no. So they'd have a 3D image of the crime scene, um, and you don't know when they got it or what they did with it. They never talked to you about it? No. Thank you, Court's indulgence. Thank you. Mr. Brown. We go to the jury room for a 10-minute recess. Please do not discuss the case.